G'day everyone, my name's Dordama. This is the UEVR Enhancements mod for Satisfactory. This video is a guide and a demonstration of how the mod allows you to experience all the things you can do in Satisfactory in virtual reality. The mod implements uh, VR motion controllers. These are represented in the game by these default controller models. One day I'd like to replace these with actual hand models or even a full body VRIK, but for the moment these are basic models that show you where your hand position is. Like many other VR games, movement is done with the stick on the left controller. Press the stick forwards to go forwards, press it back to go back, and push it left or right to strafe or sidestep to the left or the right. On the right controller, press left or right on the stick to smoothly turn left or right. If smooth turn makes you nauseous, there's also an option in the mod settings for snap turn. Or alternatively, you can just turn in real life, which is handy if you have a, a wireless headset like a Quest 3 and you've got a swivel chair, you can just sit and turn on the spot. Or you could play standing up. To jump, you press the trigger on the left controller. If you've got a jetpack or a hover pack, you can also press trigger to boost with the jetpack or to fly up higher with the hover pack. To crouch, press the grip button on the left controller. When flying with a hover pack, press the grip button to fly lower. Putting this together, we can move forward, press crouch and then jump to do a slide jump. You can click in the stick on the left controller to toggle sprint. So once again, click to sprint, grip to slide and trigger to jump. So how do we get information and control things in VR? Satisfactory tends to have a lot of information on the screen which is distracting in VR and it also has a lot of buttons to press to do different actions. On each wrist you can access a panel with information and controls which you access by rotating the controller as if you were looking at a wristwatch. The right panel contains the most regularly used actions and changes based on your current context. This is currently on the default actions, and as you can see, we've got a flashlight option here for toggling your flashlight. There's an option here for drawing or holstering your current equipment. When using equipment, it replaces the controller model with the equipment, which you can then move around. When you holster the equipment, it shows the VR controller again. Otherwise, you wouldn't know where your hands are. Similarly, we can start building using the sample option. Just aim at what you want to build, and select sample, and you will start building the same item. To cancel any action, use the grip button on the right controller. If you're building and you want to return to the default state, press grip and you'll stop building. Pressing grip will also exit vehicles and close interaction screens. So you may have noticed there that I started building without using the menu. Some of the action buttons have a small symbol at the bottom of them, which indicates a button on the controller that you can use as a shortcut for that action. So I can press the X button to holster my weapon, or the Y button to toggle the flashlight. This icon on the sample action indicates clicking in the stick on the right controller. If I aim at a building part that I wish to build and click in the right stick, it will enter build mode with a copy of that building part. So if I stick click on a beam over there, I can start building a beam. You can see that while building, the right panel opens and shows you information about what you're building and what parts it takes to build it. You can still rotate your wrist to access the build actions. You can see we're in a default build mode here, which means when I build this pillar, it will build in straight directions. By clicking the mode option, I can change to diagonal mode and build pillars at diagonal angles. Or we can change the mode to freeform and build to wherever we want to. There's actually a third way you can interact with this menu and that is using the stick on the right controller. If you push up on the stick, it will open the menu and it will highlight one of the menu items. So while holding up, you can then press left or right to select a different menu item. So if I go all the way to the left, I can then toggle my flashlight. I can quickly scroll across to the build menu option and open the full build menu. I could also pick sample this way. This is also the quickest way to open the dismantle mode. Of 
Good old zoop mode is in here as well, along with vertical zoop mode. The switch action can be used to quickly switch between variations on a part. And switch can also be toggled using the B button on the right controller. Switch here will toggle between the 1m, 2m and 4m foundations. I can toggle the zoop mode using the A button. I can use nudge mode by pressing Y on the left controller and then I can use either the menu arrow keys or I can use the right stick to nudge the foundations around. I'm going to zoop a column of 4m foundations and next to it I will zoop a column of 2m foundations. If I go to dismantle, uh, it would take a very long time to dismantle these one at a time. Um, but as I can see, if we open the dismantle menu, there is an option for filter and also for multi-select. I can select multiples by aiming at the multi option in the menu and selecting it one at a time, uh, which is faster than deleting them one at a time, it's not particularly fast. Or I can use the Y button, which is a shortcut for multi-select, to very quickly select all of them. If I select filter on the 2 meter foundations, either by using the menu or by using the X button, I can then very quickly select just the 2 meter foundations and delete them. And then I can filter by 4 meter and quickly delete those. In the default menu, you can also access the paint mode directly or the full build menu. Normally you start building by sampling because it's much quicker, but sometimes you, you might need to select a specific part so you can open the build menu. We'll get back to that build menu in a second, because first I want to show you what's on the left wrist panel. This panel has a number of different tabs with information and additional actions that are situational, whereas the right menu has common actions that are used frequently. The left has more detailed and situational actions and information. The status tab shows a summary of general status information. It includes your health along with what equipment you have in your hands, plus any equipment you have on your back. The Equipment tab shows all items in your hands that you can quickly switch between and you can select equipment to actively use by clicking on it. If you're using a weapon that has different ammo types, you can also select which ammo it's using from this panel. So we've switched to the homing ammo for the rifle. Seeing these items in VR gives you a deeper appreciation of the amount of detail that Coffee Stain have put in these models. We also have the build menu here. This is effectively the same as the quick build menu from the flat screen version of the game. Here it allows uh, easy quick selection of pre-selected build items. So let's select a splitter to build. Let's press Y to nudge. And then we move it into the position we want. And right trigger to build. If you're tired of building and getting something in the wrong place all the time, a very useful pattern is aim to place, press Y to lock, right stick to nudge into place, and right trigger to build. Down here we can also change which build menu we have along here. So as you can see, there's all different stuff that I've put in here. You can also put paint colors on here. So if you want to switch to a particular paint color, you can paint it in like that. As well as materials. So if we wanted to change this to some asphalt along the sides there like that. That's, you know, it's very easy to do. Uh, also for decals, you can take your little guy icon and you can paste that on. Oh, that's not pasting on. Interesting. Ah, interesting. And you can also get to your full build menu here. The scanner tab shows everything you can scan for, so just click what you want to scan for and it will scan. So off in the distance there I can see some coal 200 meters away, 300 meters away. I can also access the map from here. The resources that I ping will show up on the map. Now there's a heck of a lot of interfaces in Satisfactory. Some of them you use a lot, like the build menu, like the inventory. So if I open up the inventory, 
So the way the UEVR injector tools work is it attaches the usual screen camera point of view to where the right controller is. This tricks the game into letting you aim with the right controller. This has the side effect that the game user interface also follows where you're aiming with the right controller. Now you can't see it in this view, but if I switch the view to what the actual headset is seeing, you can see the interface follows the right controller. So to interact with this screen, I need to hold the right controller still and then use the left controller to point at the interface. Then we can use the left controller to grab the hover pack and equip it. It shows you along the bottom here what the controls are interacting with the interface. Now this is a bit janky. Sometimes drag and drop doesn't work. Sometimes certain buttons don't work as you'd expect. Uh, there's definitely room for improvement here. But in general, it's functional. Similar with the build menu, you can pull this up. If I'm looking through the, the view of the headset, it moves around where the controller moves. But if I hold that it's controller still, I can use the left controller and I can pick whatever I want. Including I can go into blueprints and I can say, you know, let's uh, pick... Let's pick a bunch of smelters. And if I wanted to, I can plonk down a whole bunch of smelters there. And I can still nudge it, same as I would anything else. One other advanced control thing is how do we rotate holograms? So let's say I want to build... what have we got? Let's say I want to build a, a constructor, but it's facing that way and I want it to face towards me. So what you do is on the right controller, you pull back on the stick and you get this little rotation indicator here. And then you can rotate that around and it will rotate the number of notches that shows there. So I could rotate it all the way around if I wanted and rotate it back the other way. So if I just want to move it one notch around, I pull down, move across to there and then let go and now it's rotated correctly. And then I can lock it in place, line it up how I want, snap it in place. Okay, similarly, under equipment, if you have something that has different ammo, you can select the ammo here, but you can also pull down on the stick and then it will show you the different ammo for the weapon and then you can move left or right on the stick until it selects the one you want. And then just let go and we'll switch to that ammo. So once you get used to it, you can very quickly switch between different ammos. Another important building technique is using snap mode for positioning and rotation of building items. So a quick recap of building shortcuts. A on the right controller will toggle our zoop mode. B button will switch between different variations of the building item. On the left controller, pressing Y will lock the part in place and allow you to nudge it around into position. And holding down the X button enables snap mode. So if I hold down snap, you can see it'll allow me to position it in any position. Without snap, if I rotate it, it'll only rotate by 45 degrees. If I hold down snap, not only can I place it anywhere I want, I can also rotate it by five degree increments. And then if I want, I can lock it in place and nudge it around to the right position. Another way of accessing snap mode is through the menu here. And if you actually click on this icon, it will actually lock snap mode on. Then wherever you move it, snap mode will stay on. And if you're doing lots of rotations like this, you can keep snap mode on without having to hold the X button down the whole time. Okay. Now let's just pop into our inventory and show you something else. Where is it? Here it is, our old friend, the cart. For some of the vehicles, we've also added a first person mode. So once you're in a vehicle, you get a dashboard in the vehicle. If I had headlights, I could turn the headlights on and off. I can turn the siren on. Um, 
so everyone knows we're coming. You can also switch to a third person camera if you still prefer that. Uh, but no, the first person is pretty cool. Although, coffee stain, can we get a bit more detail in the cockpit here, please? Let's turn that siren off first, shall we? There we go. Hello, Bean. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate bringing all these parts together. Let's build a little factory. Uh, what I want to do is I want to build uh, a set of three assemblers that I can reuse and daisy chain together. So let's start with a concrete floor, so I'm just going to steal that from over there. Uh, let's go two meter base, I will turn it onto normal zoop mode, snap it in the corner, zip it across. Uh, I think 3x4 is probably what I'm going to need for this one. Okay, then I've got a constructor here, but I can select that, and then I can press uh, the B button to swap to an assembler. I can press down on the stick to rotate it around. Come over here, lock it in place, nudge it across to where I want it. How's that looking there? Yeah, let's go a bit more room at the back than the front. Okay, so over here, if I hold down uh, X again, it will snap again. So that will snap in line with that one. Now the third one, I'll snap it and then lock it and then nudge it across two so that we have a walkway in the middle here. So there's our third assembler. Uh, now let's go over here and grab some splitters. So this is our input along here. So let's come from this other direction. So rotate it, lock, nudge, nudge, and let's do a top row, lock, nudge, 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 nudge. How did we get by without nudge? Okay. On the bottom here, uh, this is a Mark III conveyor belt, uh, but I'll just use the B button to upgrade it to a 5. It's not easy. general purpose one so I don't need particularly Mark 5 inputs, probably 3 is enough so I'll swap back to 3 and connect up these. Okay now we need some lifts so over here I've defaulted to Mark 3, these are a little tricky to place, there we go, snaps in place, too easy. There's our inputs, now we go out the front. Let's have our outputs. So let's pick the splitter and then we'll use B or you can use the switch. You can just switch here to switch between the different ones. Uh, let's switch to merger. Uh, I think I will have them coming back this direction. So the green arrow is on the other side there. Actually, that's heading that way. Uh, sure, let's go that way. I don't trust how slow the output is, so I'm going to put a Mark V on here. And I'll put Mark III's on the output. Okay. So now we need some power to run these by. So let's go, where did I put? Over here. Hmm, can't find it. Oh, let's go to the build menu. Oh, I'm looking for is a small concrete pillar. Uh, let's go there. Uh, actually, I might put it more forward one more. Okay, now what I want is I want 
in position there, out by, oops, not free form, swap to default, out by one meter. Zip that along, that should line up perfectly. Dismantle that one. Put to the end, that's it. Now we connect our wire up. There we go. So now we've got them all daisy chained together. I won't pick any recipe at this stage, I'll leave it at the moment. Basically this will be a general purpose uh, blueprint that we can use multiple times. Okay, what I do want to do is I want to put a bit of uh, walkway in here. So let's just get this now. probably haven't lined that up correctly. Rotate it. Oof. Oof. Stamp all these. I was just getting the height from them. that one We've got a bit of a walkway around in between the machines uh, that will join on together nicely. Okay, uh, where should we build this factory? Actually, we should save it, so let's come over here. Uh, now, one problem is uh, this mod doesn't have a keyboard. If you're using something like Virtual Desktop, uh, you can use that, or Steam VR has its own keyboard, um, or you can just cremate everything and call it new, new Blueprint and then a number. So we'll remember that for now. We can fix it up later. Uh, do we want to clear some forest? Let's clear some forest, so let's go with our, our gun. Let's change to some explosives. Chainsaw would have been faster. Or, you know, a whole pile of strategically placed my whisks and then blow them all up at once. That'll do. Okay. Let's put a bit of a foundation down. Let's do the right thing and lock it in place. Okay. Let's build our blueprint. wasn't it? Where's my, oh, there it is. Okay, so let's stick it out there, down, rotate. Uh, now that's the output, so I want it the other way around, so I'll rotate it around two notches. Doesn't need it lined up exactly, but there we go. Might have to move that power ball. Place that here. Now, if we go into Blueprint Snap mode, we can snap another one on there. And another one on there. Now, let's tidy this power up. Let's come over here. Let's uh, 
copy the cable that up to that point there. Let's connect these blueprints together over here. Here across to the other side. So my blueprint maker still has power. Okay, so now all these are powered. We could just pick a recipe. Right, let's pick rotors, um, and away we go. So that will now make rotors. Once we input um, rods and screws. So if I had a truckload of screws, I could put them in the end here, and there we have nine assemblers connected. But we do also need because it's a blueprint. We need to connect the conveyors between them. So this is our output. And then the other side. Bada bing, bada bosh. Okay, done. And you could put a nice extra, if you wanted to touch it up, you could have an extra foundation over here. Staircase down. I'm just going to put one over the other side as well. Nice. Now I can go for a walk around in VR and inspect our factory and configure it. So that's my demo and guide of the UEVR Enhancements mod to play Satisfactory in virtual reality. I hope you found something in here to enjoy, whether you've already tried the VR mod or if you haven't tried this mod yet, it might inspire you to give it a go. That said, Satisfactory 1.0 is coming out in just a couple of weeks, in which case this mod's going to break. Rest assured, once the mod tools are updated and I've fixed all the bugs and updated to the latest Satisfactory 1.0, this mod will be back online and ready for people to use. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Now, did any of that record or not?